Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first virtual meeting of the Dorset Council Northern Area Planning Committee. I'm Councillor Sherry Jesperson, and I'm chair of this committee. This meeting is being conducted under the new rules for re remote meetings. It's being live streamed to the public and a recording of the meeting will be available on the Council's website after the meeting. Before we start, just a few technical matters. May I ask everyone to keep your microphones on mute unless you are actually speaking. This helps with the sound quality. It's important not to talk over one another. So members and officers, if you want to speak, could you use the chat facility to indicate that you'd like to speak? This is the equivalent of raising your hand in a face to face meeting. Would you please not use the chat facility for talking amongst yourselves because we need to keep things as simple as we can. Each time you speak, could you say your name unless I have introduced you? This is important so that uh, the minute secretary and the members of public who are listening to the meeting know who's actually talking. May I now introduce the Dorset Council officers who are with us at this meeting today. From the planning office, we have Robert Lennis, area lead major projects, Hannah Smith, area manager, Simon McFarlane, planning caseworker. From highways, we have Steve Savage, transport development liaison manager, Emma Baker, project engineer. We have Lara Altry, our solicitor. In democratic services, we have Helen Whitby, democratic services officer, who's uh, our a movie director for today. We have Fiona King, Democratic Services Officer, who's the Minute Secretary and in charge of this meeting. We have Lindsay Watson with us today and Liz Eaton, I think. Have I admitted anybody? No, good, thank you. I just want to say thank you all very much to the officers who are helping us with this meeting and to the officers who are working behind the scenes. I think we would want to acknowledge how much extra work is involved for council officers in running these virtual meetings and we're all very grateful. We'll now take an alphabetical roll call of the councillors. As I call your name, please unmute your microphone, indicate that you are present and then mute once again. I'll go reasonably slowly through this so we can get it right. So, Councillor Andrews. Hello, John Andrews, uh, member for Sherborne, uh, and I am present in the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Cook. Hello there, Councillor Tim Cook, member for Shaftesbury, and I'm present. Thank you. Councillor Fry. Good morning, Councillor Les Fry from Dorchester West, present at, at the meeting. Thank you. Councillor Hall. Councillor Matthew Hall, Sherborne West, present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jones. Carol Jones, Councillor for Sturminster Newton, present. Thank you. Thank you. We have had apologies from Councillor Legg. Councillor Penfold. Good morning, Councillor Penfold, member for Yetminster Ward, present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Pipe. Councillor Bill Pipe, present at the meeting, member for the Lichits and Upton. Thank you. Councillor Pothecary. Good morning, Chairman. Councillor Valpothecary, joint um, member for Gillingham, present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Taylor. Good morning, Councillor David Taylor here, member for Charlemont to St Mary and present at the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. So before we start with the agenda, if I may, just a few words about the new procedure for um, members and also so, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Chairman. Yeah. You missed me out, Belinda. Oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> Councillor Rideout. Councillor Rideout, good morning. Present, uh, representing the Gillingham Ward. Thank you. I, I apologise, and, right. and as a Gillingham Councillor, we're particularly pleased to have you with us on this occasion. It's okay. a very Gillingham meeting, this one. Okay. So. Uh, a word about the new procedures. This is for those of us participating in the meeting and for other people who might be listening in. So for each application, 
I will invite the case officer to give their report and recommendations. Members of the public who would normally address a live meeting themselves have been invited to submit written representations, not more than 450 words. These submissions will be read to the committee by a, a council officer who has nothing to do with that particular application. Representations will be taken in the following order. So members of the public opposing the application, followed by members of the public in support, the applicant or agent, the town or parish council, and finally the ward member who may address the committee uh, live for a maximum of three minutes. The total amount of time for public participation for any given application is 15 minutes. Following these representations, I will invite uh, officers to clarify any points that might have been raised. Then the committee will deliberate and come to a view. At the end of which, I will take a, a roll call alphabetically for your vote. When we come to vote, councillors, as I call your name, can you just, the, the um, uh, recommendation that you're voting about will be on the screen. And as I call your name, can you just say for if you support the recommendation, against if you don't support the recommendation, or you may abstain. That should be fairly simple. Uh, Excellent, thank you. So moving on to our agenda then. First of all, uh, do, uh, do we have any apologies for absence? We have Councillor Legg. Thank you. Um, item two, members, uh, do any of you wish to declare an interest in any of the matters on our agenda today? Please could you use the chat facility to indicate that you would like to speak? Um. Well, uh, sorry, I, sorry, Chairman, I can't uh, get to the bottom of my chat facility. Please may I declare an interest on agenda item six? Sorry, it's Councillor Pothecary here. Thank you, Councillor Pothecary. Um, I, this item um, came before Gillingham Town Council and was discussed and uh, agreed to support. Um, so I have already voted on this application. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Anybody else? Yes, Councillor, please, Chairman. Councillor Rideout, you'd like to speak. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, regarding the TRO item six, yes. um, I'm declaring that I'm not making a declaration of interest, although I'm a Gillingham Ward member, but I wasn't a member of the town council at the time when there was a vote and debate. I simply agreed for the order to proceed to public consultation, which we are required to do for it to go forward. That's very helpful. That's for clarity. That's very helpful indeed, Councillor Rydak. Um, any other de declarations of interest? No. Uh, I'm seeing none coming through, so we'll move on. Thank you very much. Um, item, agenda item three, can we confirm? Sorry, I'm hearing some voice. No, I'll move on. Can we confirm the minutes of the meeting of the 25th of February to, uh, as a correct record? Now, members, to keep this simple, could you just indicate in the chat line if you do not agree with these minutes? And I'll give you all a minute to do that. I have nothing coming through, so I will take these minutes as a true record and I will sign them um, when I'm able, when the council buildings reopen and I'm able to do so. So agenda item for public participation, I've covered that. So agenda item five, moving on then to our first planning application, agenda item 5A. This is application number two, 2018 outline, west of Shaftesbury Road at land south of Gillingham. Members, this application has already been subject of a resolution to grant by North Dorset District Council. 
but it's before us today because the recommendations to uh, because of some recommendations to change the section 106 obligations and the conditions so that's why we are seeing it for a second time i would remind members that this is an outline application and we're looking at the principle of development and details of access Planning Officer uh, Robert Lennis is presenting this with Simon McFarlane, I think, in uh, in a supporting role, backing vocals from Simon. So, Robert Lennis, over to you, please. That's correct, Sherry. Thank you very much. Uh, can everyone see the slide that says planning application uh, reference number two twenty eighteen zero zero three six out? It's not up quite yet. I think we you can still see me. OK, it's coming, it's coming. Have a bit of patience. Let me know when you see that and then yes. I'll start. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Robert, have you, have you shared your screen? Yes, I'll do that again. Um, there I'm sharing again. And is that available to you? Not yet. All right, let's go third time lucky. Sharing. Don't, get there. Don't worry. OK, it's I press the sharing button. And. I've got the slide available. Still nothing, eh? All right, let's try it one more time. Helen, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm I clicking. Can't, I I'm, can't see your desktop at all. Oh, oh I can now. Well done. Excellent. Can everyone see the first slide that has planning application reference? Yes, Helen, could we could we have Robert's face um, on the yes, screen? Absolutely. Thank you. Very oh. nearly there. Enough of me. <laughs> oh, Robert, you need to turn your video on, please. All right. Um, it is on. It is on, is it? OK. Yeah. Bear with me a moment then. Bearing. It, the video is not moving across as it should at the current time. I'll keep trying. I don't know whether you want to start your presentation. Um, how about if I turn it off and then turn it back on? And we'll Thank see you. how we get on with that. Yeah. OK. That turned it off and back on. I'm, I'm not sure what other members can see, but I can see Robert's video is on and I can also see the application slide. So it's it's perfect from the device that I'm using. And okay. I can see Robert on the bottom of my screen and the slide as well. OK, hello, all you people out there in TV land. How can I? I, th I think most people can see uh, what okay. we've got. I can see Robert. I can see Carol. There's Helen. Well, if it's all right with you, Sherry, the then text. I'll proceed with the presentation. That, yes, please. Right. Um, so the application reference, we've already introduced this and uh, the description of the development. This site uh, has quite a long history that I, I feel I, we need to just briefly update you all on or bring you up to speed as possible. Please be aware that the council has worked closely with landowners, developers and key stakeholders, as well as the local community over many years uh, to develop the proposals for the Gillingham Southern Extension. 
The community was engaged in the production of a report called Assessing the Growth Potential for Gillingham as far back as 2009. A range of growth options were considered at that time, um, and the scenario for growth to the south was considered to be the most sustainable. The community was consulted on options for the uh, southern extension itself in 2012. A concept plan workshop with landowners, developers, key stakeholders, and the local community produced a concept plan which is at the heart of policy 21. Now, policy 21 is quite an important policy for uh, this southern extension as it will be the guiding factor for many years to come along with the uh, the applicants uh, draft master plan framework. You will have seen in the uh, the reports that Gillingham Town Council has no objections to the proposal and there have been very few uh, local objections due to the amount of uh, effort and work that's um, been put into developing the southern allocation over the years. You'll also see that Gillingham has a neighborhood plan which uh, is uh, has identified this for their local uh, and future allocations of growth. Uh, broadly speaking, looking at the slide you see in front of you today, to th the blue area is a Park Farm, which is in the ownership of, or, or they're working with the developer CG Fry and Sons. The central portion, which is in yellow, is uh, controlled by a con um, Wellbeck, which is the application we'll be considering first today. The red area is employment land uh, controlled by uh, Brickfield Business Park. And Lawton Lakes is uh, controlled by Taylor Wimpy. Moving along, so last year in February, this application uh, came before the planning committee and there was a resolution to grant uh, conditional planning permission subject to a few matters being addressed ahead of time. Uh, one was with regard to the environment agency's concerns. Another was uh, concerns with regard to archaeology on the site. And lastly, the completion of the Section 106 legal agreement. These matters, uh, at least the first two, have been addressed and that is why we're bringing it back before you. The legal agreement is a negotiation process which is familiar to every large uh, housing allocation. Here's the red line of the site. As you can see, it's an extensive site. And the next slide is an aerial photograph. As you can see, it's a green field, so we're not a, a we haven't put on many uh, photos, if any at all, with this application or these applications because they're green fields. Uh, we trust you know what grass looks like in the hedgerows. Um, the detailed applications, uh, please bear in mind that this application before you today is to decide the principle of development along with uh, access. So details on access only and the principle of development. Here is an illustrative master plan. This is only illustrative. As we said, as I just said, it's we're deciding the principle of development as well as the access points. Uh, here, the next few slides are showing the access points and our highway engineer, Steve Savage, will pick up on these after I finish. Here's another access point to the west, an access point off of Woodpecker Meadows. Here's another slide of Woodpecker Meadows, just the aerial to give you um, more of a context. As I stated a moment ago, the Environment Agency uh, had some concerns with the uh, a year ago. Updated information has been submitted and we have no objections now from the Environment Agency subject to conditions. Similarly, the archaeological evaluation, um, weather conditions, and had some effect on being able to get out on site last year. 
so they weren't able to complete their uh, recording in time, which is triggered uh, this application having to come back as well. You'll see that the senior archaeolo archaeologist for the county or for the council has no objection subject to conditions uh, that are proposed. The Section 106 legal agreement is in a draft form, and I would like to think that we're very close uh, to getting that signed and agreed. All parties have uh, been working positively and uh, sharing information openly with one another. So uh, the negotiation process is ongoing, but I feel as if we're fairly close to having that resolved. Within the 106, uh, broadly speaking, uh, these are the uh, the heads of terms that we'll be seeking to get contributions on. And this has been, the applicants have been well aware of this from the start. So uh, this is just for your benefit. You can see that primary education is going to be a, a, a big matter. There will be some uh, land contributions for health facilities as well as other uh, contributions that, that are listed there quite a bit of play area uh, being proposed. And of course, highway matters. Uh, we have been able to get some, secure some grant funding to improve the highways and help deliver the principal street of the development. No doubt you would have read my colleague's report from uh, 2019 and these matters were detailed therein. Uh, in conclusion, the application accords with the uh, local plan policies. I would reiterate that the uh, draft master plan framework is in a, a condition that we feel is able to progress the, the, the site and the allocation. Uh, I would also stress the point that the master plan framework is covering the housing allocations uh, and not the employment allocations. Because of the numerous landowners, it was quite difficult to get everybody to the table to agree on a master on one master plan framework. So we have to work with what is available to us and the council will be uh, for those parts of this master plan framework that don't address the full allocation the council will be uh, either working with those land uh, owners to develop a master plan framework or uh, having to uh, develop a master plan framework on our own. But that should not affect these ap applications. These applications do have a, a draft master plan framework to take forward the development. Uh, they have gone through a public consultation. Uh, you will have seen that there was a statement of community involvement. Uh, and in that respect, we are satisfied that the applications accord with local plan policies as well as the MPPF. Um, uh, moving right along, so uh, coming to the conclusion, you'll see that we have recommended uh, uh, granting conditional planning permission subject to comments being received from the Environmental Health uh, Department. There was a, a hands up somewhere in the officer chain over the past year. It, it was overlooked that Environmental Health uh, hadn't commented on these applications. And as fate would have it, they contacted us a week or two ago and said, do you want these comments still? And uh, we said, yes, of course. So we have to put in this uh, caveat into the decision on matters with regard to environmental health uh, my own professional perspective on this is if you look at the illustrate illustrative master plan uh, environmental health is going to be thinking about uh, neighbor amenity and land contamination issues if you can see the arrow that i'm moving here uh, the development isn't coming into close contact with uh, many, if any, uh, other residential developments uh, to the extent or the relationship that would make me 
uh, have some reservations uh, about what might come from the environmental health officers. So uh, as well as the point that this is a greenfield site, so I'm not expecting any land contamination uh, issues to pop up. So we would be expecting a condition to the effect of if you should discover land contamination, you'll need to stop work. And that is a common condition you've seen on other applications. Uh, with regard to neighbor amenity, we would expect a construction management uh, condition. And you will have seen, we already have a construction management uh, condition listed. So uh, that may need a bit of tweaking, but we feel as if we are, are fairly close and, and I'm comfortable with this caveat that any adverse comments received by the environmental health officers and the addition of any conditions they would have uh, reasonably necessary in consultation with the chair of planning committee. So there will be some form of public representation. We will run it past Sherry um, any any particulars. And if if she feels you need to be reconsulted or we need to bring this back, then of course we will do that. Uh, you'll see recommendation B uh, is if the section 106 legal agreement is not completed uh, by the 14th or such time is to be extended by the head of planning. These are exceptional times, so uh, we need to build in a bit of flexibility uh, with this and section 106 agreements are always um, uh, difficult. And I, I'm aware that some people have concerns with the uh, amount of affordable housing being delivered with this site. And that is a direct result of the viability exercises we have um, from the developer and ourselves. And that's when we say it's a tough negotiation. We are at the table representing the council and we're trying to deliver the affordable housing that we require. And uh, the developers are aware that we're seeking 25% and they're doing their best to as we are doing our best and, and that's what the negotiation process is all about. But please bear in mind that viability can be an issue with any major housing application. Even if the, if the market crashes or changes halfway through a development and the development has to stop, we as a uh, uh, competent authority, if we're asked to come back to the table to reconsider viability issues for a developer, then we would do that. Uh, so please bear in mind that uh, we are trying to get the best, we are trying to get a policy compliant amount of affordable housing here. It's just that at this point in time, um, it looks for the first phase that uh, we won't be achieving that. But the, the larger aims and, and what we're trying to build into the 106 is to recoup some of that later on in other phases. And the developer is aware of that. So if you'll broaden your horizons and try to look at this development, which will be taking place for the next 15 years or so, once the spades get in the ground, uh, there is there is a lot to be achieved here and um, a lot of benefits uh, to be for the local community. Sherry, those are our recommendations. Over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Robert. That was uh, very clear and helpful. Um, uh, I now, unless Simon McFarlane has anything to add. No. Ro Robert, I just wondered whether you Please. wanted to um, just quickly refer to the update paper that was um, submitted to councillors, um, just referencing the, the minor changes to, to conditions and clarification on, on matters. Uh, Simon, why don't you carry on with that, please? OK. Um, Thank you, Simon. So an update paper was uh, submitted to councillors um, just to clarify um, one section on archaeology, just to um, confirm um, why our county archaeologists considered that, um, that the mitigation was acceptable and that we'd taken the heritage matters into consideration and on balance um, with the benefits and the that level of low importance of the fines and um, sufficient mitigation was provided. 
Um, it details the proposed change to the to the initial recommendation A and B, which Robert has covered, um, to set out detail on environmental health and the extension of time to be agreed with the head of planning. And then it sets out at section three proposed changes to conditions which are largely just wording issues um, and sets out the conditions that remain unchanged. And that's that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, that's very helpful. Um, so now we move on to if that's it from from the the two of you, then then we move on to Steve Savage from from the highways um, perspective on this. Steve, are you there? I'm here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Hopefully you can all see me. Um, as you've heard, there are. Uh, three points of access being considered as part of this, um, this application, this outline application. The first is uh, on slide seven, it's the primary access from the B3081 Shaftesbury Road, which is located just to the south of the existing Park Farm roundabout, which serves Orchard Park and uh, Screw Fix and the industrial estate, etc. As you can see from the plan, it's proposed to provide a three arm signalised junction onto the main road at the eastern end of the principal street. Uh, the principal street itself, you've got some indicative uh, uh, drawing there, which indicates dedicated left and right turning lanes. Uh, there'll be a right turning lane on the northern arm to accommodate vehicles, which will be turning right into the site to ensure that the junction can accommodate large HGVs safely. There'll be a number of footways provided, a two metre footway provided on the western side of Shaftesbury Road along the site frontage, which will then tie into the footway further to the north. A new two metre wide footway provided on the eastern side to the north of the junction, and there'll be dedicated pedestrian facilities on the northern and western arms to ensure that we do have safe pedestrian movement across Shaftesbury Road. Uh, slide eight, I believe, is the western end of the principal street. As you've heard, the principal street is subject to a current application submitted by Dorset Council. The alignment you see there shows that the B3ON92 new road will be realigned and extended broadly in the location of Cole Street Lane, which will then form the minor arm of priority junction with the principal street. So the principal street will have the priority flow. The proposed junction will provide visibility displays in accordance with manual for streets for vehicle speed subject to 30 mile per hour and a two metre wide footway will be provided on the extended section of New Road on the northern and southern sides as far as New House Cottages and Cole Street Lane. Uh, the next slide, uh, I believe is slide nine, uh, Woodpecker Meadow. This is an extension of the existing uh, highway, Woodpecker Meadow, which is served from the Taylor Wimpy development immediately to the north of the site. Uh, it uh, currently provides access to 14 residential properties and when the Taylor Wimpy development was approved, it was ensured that the carriageway itself was continuous to the site boundary to avoid any ransom issues, obviously with the intention to develop in the land further to the south at a future date. Uh, it's typically 5.5 metres wide with two metre wide footways on either side. Uh, the proposal, as you can see, is to extend this carriageway at the five and a half metre wide dimension, two metre wide footways on either side. And the intention is it will serve up to a maximum of 100 dwellings. And I think the only other thing I'd mention on this is that a stage one safety audit was undertaken independently uh, of the proposed access arrangements and it raises no overriding safety issues with the scheme. Uh, thank you, Chair. That's all I need to say on the accesses. Thank you very much, Steve. That's very helpful, and very clear. Um, we move on now to the public uh, representations. We have the first of these is from Stephen Hill, a resident, and this is going to be read by Hannah Smith. Hannah. Thank you, Chair. Clearly, the head of planning was unable to complete the Section 106 agreement as delegated for February 2019, including the percentage of affordable housing, AH and with the precondition worked the Environment Agency's holding objection was not achieved within one month. Assuming the Council did implement its agreed 2019 precondition, please can you describe, the committee report is silent, the outcome of the Secretary of State's SOS, 
deliberations on environmental on, on environment agencies then objection report section 7.0 and 15.0 since the applicant had one month i.e march 2019 to satisfy the preconditions and did not do so without referral to the secretary of state this recommendation now gives the applicant section 170 recommendation b until november 2020 to sign the, the section 106 agreement this is too long and should be stopped now by refusal the district valuer report states that since that states that the site can derive 25 percent affordable housing whilst the report states only 10 percent in the recommendation even given the lack of the five-year housing land supply and the 25 percent affordable housing aim overall 10% affordable housing is a very poor outcome for the provision of affordable housing. Despite cursory and challengeable comments from the Highway Authority, access via Woodpecker Meadow to even 100 homes risks child safety and is an unsuitable road surface and is not in the landowner's control by the applicant. <clears throat> With the current market, un market uncertainty, development cost, site infrastructure impracticalities and site viability it is unlikely housing construction will ever commence. Government 10 million housing infrastructure funding for the proposed new principal street access road should be reprioritised and spent elsewhere. Otherwise, I feel a road to nowhere being built at the public expense to facilitate the development and housing never being constructed. That would be embarrassing and risk antisocial and criminal behaviour. It is important that Dorset Council adopts the correct process to avoid costly and time consuming risk of calling and or judicial review. A new planning application is needed, not least to enable meaningful and statutory community engagement and consultation. In these changed times and the impact on our priorities, the community will support a decision to refuse. I would urge the planning committee to refuse this application and by doing so avoid incurring misdirected public expenditure, few affordable homes, no site financial viability, risk of successful challenge or Secretary of State calling, poor public safety and facilitating a proposal that is flawed in the current economic climate. Committee should ask officers to put your refusal in, into policy terms that reflect the sensible and community supported reasons for your refusal. I don't expect an appeal Rather, with the economic uncertainty and marginal site viability, I expect that the applicant will now be satisfied with a decision to refuse. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Hannah. Um, the next uh, representation we have is from the agent, Montague Evans. Again, Hannah, you're reading that for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. This written representation is made on behalf of Wellbook Strategic Land. The applicants for the outline application relating to the new house and ham farm element of the Gillingham strategic site allocation. This application is presented to the committee today following a resolution to grant planning permission at the North Dorset Planning Committee meeting in February 2019, subject to preconditions and completion of a Section 106 agreement. Since this time, we have not only been negotiating the Section 106 with officers, but also utilising this time to progress the various precondition works relating to archaeology and flood risk matters. Through trial trenching, detailed flood risk investigations and modelling, all such works have been completed to a high standard and have been agreed by the Council's officers and statutory consultees, such as the Environment Agency. These approvals are reflected in the wording of the planning conditions for which the committee's approval is sought today. The approved works have also necessitated minor alterations to the application red line boundary for which your approval is also sought. Lastly, we have continued to work alongside Dorset Council in order to help secure the significant funding that has now been secured to deliver the principal street and some of the associated key inf strategic infrastructure at the outset of the project implementation phase. We are therefore in an advanced position to complete the final Section 106 negotiations and move towards delivery phase of this strategically important development some 12 years after its inception. The applicant wishes to reassure the committee that it remains fully committed to ensuring the successful delivery of the development and, will and that will deliver much needed housing and infrastructure for the local community. 
We therefore respectively, respectively request that the committee re resolve to grant planning permission in accordance with recommendation A. In the unlikely event that the outstanding section 106 negotiations are delayed for any good reason beyond six months, we request that the committee resolve to bring the application back to committee rather than simply refusing the application as per recommendation B. We have come too far on a complex but critical project to set arbitrary deadlines and if the scheme is to be refused it should be done so by members. This will ensure the committee has the opportunity to reassess matters and potentially avoid any further unnecessary delays to the, to the delivery of the scheme on what could simply be an unavoidable technicality. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, I now invite the ward member, Councillor David Walsh, to address the committee. David, are you with us? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Good. I will just speak once covering these two applications. Thank you very much. Here are my 450 words. Thank you. For the last eight years, I have been working with the community on the Southern Extension to Gillingham, not only as one of the three ward members, nor chairman of the Gillingham Growth Board, but also the portfolio holder of planning at the predecessor North Dorset District Council, overseeing the North Dorset local plan within which this has always been a very important allocation. This site allocated in the adopted North Dorset local plan was supported by all members of council and the public, successfully going through examination by the Secretary of State's appointed inspector. The Southern Extension is supported by Gillingham Town Council and supported in Gillingham's adopted neighbourhood plan, which 91% of the public voted yes at referendum. This has been such a community project that on my invitation, the then Secretary of State for Communities, the Honourable Sajid Javid, came to Gillingham to meet the community, which he then held up publicly and in the press as an exemplar, saying that it was exactly the community involvement with development that he wanted to see nationally. This is because the people of Gillingham master planned the southern extension to their town, in preference to development being pepper potted around the town with already overstretched infrastructure. North Dorset District Council, Dorset County Council and then Dorset Council supported a bid for housing infrastructure funding from Homes England to build the access road to the Southern Extension before any development takes place. A bit of forward thinking. Infrastructure doesn't have to come in five years after the development. The separate access is so important as without it all construction vehicles would have to go through the densely populated Ham Farm estate past St Mary the Virgin Primary School, still without safety markings after 10 years because the roads have never been adopted. We did not want to see repetition of such problematic development and were very pleased to have a well-established quality builder in CG Fry involved with building out this strategic site allocation. Gillingham residents are asking when the Southern Extension is coming, not only because of its supporting infrastructure that is being cried out for, but whilst this development is not being delivered, other speculative developers are trying to come in through the back door with applications that were not agreed in the adopted local plan or wanted by the community. It is true that there are 20 or so objections here from a population of more than 12,000 residents. It has taken nearly 12 years to get to this point because every T has been crossed and every I dotted. Please let's get on with delivering this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Walsh. Before I uh, turn to, um, I beg your pardon, I'm, on, I'm blind here. Before I turn to the committee members, um, officers, would you like to respond to any of the points that have been made in public uh, presentations here? Uh, perhaps, Robert? Thank you, Sherry. Um, Simon and I will both respond. Um, I'll you. take the first bit and the question about why this Section 106 has not been completed yet. Uh, in part, it's a matter of negotiation. We're trying to uh, also secure other off-site elements and the different parties will get a bit um, nervous or titchy depending on what's going on. So we have the Mance Junction, 
uh, towards the center of town, which we're uh, trying to uh, advance to um, improve that junction. We still have the viability questions about um, affordable housing. It's not so much a question as uh, you know, we, we have to hammer out the terms of the details of when we're going to be reviewing the viability to ensure that we're getting the the best uh, scheme possible for the community on in, especially in terms of affordable housing so that review mechanism is quite important um, and i'll stop there so that's that's in essence is why uh, the 106 has not yet been completed simon if you wanted to touch on the archaeological issues or environment agency yeah <coughs> hi chair simon here um I just want to respond to a point that was raised in the first representation by Mr Hill on the Secretary of State and the Environment Agency point. Um, in the February um, committee and um, resolution, there is a number of preconditions. The first one being um, to allow the applicant and the Environment Agency one month to continue their dialogue with the aim to provide additional information um, and or amend their proposals to the Western access. Um, and number two was failing that if the council was minded to grant permission, um, then the application be referred to the Secretary of State, um, wh which was Mr Hill's point. So I just want to clarify that um, the EA did withdraw their objection within that stated one month period. In fact, it was only uh, 10 days after the February committee on the 8th of March. So therefore, um, it was not necessary to refer the application to the Secretary of State. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if we have nothing else there to for clarification, Steve, anything on highways that needed clarifying? Uh, if you'd like me to respond to Mr Hill's comments, I can, Chair. Uh, um, it helps, yes. OK, I, I, I think the question for the Highway Authority was with regards to the access via Woodpecker Meadow for 100 homes, risking child safety, an unsuitable road surface and not in landowner control. Um, there is no defined maximum number of dwellings that can be served by a residential estate road with the geometry and characteristics that Woodpecker Meadow has, i.e. the width and the footway avail availability. We consider that the uh, proposed development is suitable in terms of capacity, safety, accessibility and the minimal in terms of the likely impact of the projected traffic movements. I think there was some talk in the past that it's a safe route to school or safer route to school um, link down Woodpecker Meadow. This isn't the case. The safer route is along the main road into the estate. And again, I would reiterate that there was a stage one road safety audit undertaken independently, which supported the safe use of this site. Um, the surfacing issue, I'm not quite certain what he's alluding to here, but Woodpecker Meadow is currently surfaced with herringbone block paviors, uh, which is the strongest and most resilient laying pattern that we allow and it is only the top 40 millimeters that's block paved and the rest is a standard estate road um, construction so if there are any future problems we could remove the block paviors and replace that element with tarmac for the wearing course um, the applicant did suggest that they would consider changing the block pavia to a low noise carriageway surfacing and this is obviously something that could be picked up at a reserve matter stage um, I think the other important thing is that, as Robert mentioned, there's a planning condition that has recommended that we no construction access to the site via Woodpecker Meadow. That would be independent um, away from this carriageway. The final point, just adoption. I know that Councillor Walsh mentioned it to it. Then the, I can confirm the Taylor Wimpy development has yet to be formally adopted as a public highway, but this is due uh, to a failing on the part of Taylor Wimpy to carry out the necessary remedial works. We still have issues with the street lamps not complying with the uh, recommended standard. So there is no Section 38 agreement in place to adopt it, and it rests with Taylor Wimpy to resolve the outstanding issues to our satisfaction. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the whether or not the access road from the main Shaftesbury Road through this estate is adopted or not is a legal matter and not one for consideration by the planning process. If consent is granted and the consortium can't reach agreement with Taylor Wimpy, who are part of the consortium uh, to use the private roads, then so be it. If and when the roads are adopted, then the problems for both parties is solved. 
So hopefully, Chair, that's answered the points that he raised. That's very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, moving on then to the committee, I would like to turn with your permission committee first to the other two Gillingham ward members who are members of our committee. It seems it's sensible that we should hear from them first. So could I ask um, Councillor Valpothecary first if she'd like to make any comments? Thank you, Chair. Um, the principle of this planning application was discussed and agreed at committee in February 2019. And as far as I can see, today's application is just a procedural matter um, regarding the Section 106 agreements and obligations and issues um, regarding the archaeological tri uh, trial trenching. So I would be pleased to propose approval of this application with the recommendations as stated. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Ryder, would you like to speak next? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ryder here, Gillingham Ward. Well, this application has been a long time in the coming ever since I actually first joined the local council. So I'm very pleased it's before us. As we've heard, it's part of the development plan for Gillingham. All statutory consultees are in support. There's tremendous local support for the, for the development to the south. I attended all the public engagements. I've read through the amended documents sent out by the head of planning. I'm happy with the proposed addition to the and the clarification on archaeology, the proposed changes to the recommendations and the conditions. I'm happy with the uh, affordable element and the, the viability review mechanism, which I think gives flexibility in these uncertain and exceptional times um, with regard to the affordability and the Section 106 obligation. Um, so I, this will just bring huge benefits, economic, environmental, community benefits to Gillingham, along with housing and infrastructure. And I've no hesitation in seconding um, Councillor Pothecary's proposal to approve. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, I have a, a couple of um, uh, councillors who'd like to ask a question. Councillor Cook first. Councillor Cook, you wanted to ask a question. Sorry, had a problem with the mic, the mouse. That's all right. We're, um, we're yeah, on the, the learning curve. Yeah. Um, the first is regarding traffic movement, but not traffic movement in and out of the site, but generally further down the road towards Gillingham. Um, I, my daughter used to go to uh, Gillingham School, and I have noticed that ever since having to try and take someone from uh, Salisbury to Gillingham at school time has never been easy. What impact has been um, looked at regarding the traffic flows from this new development into and through Gillingham? Um, because I'm sure that there are a lot of people from further up the road in my neck of the woods who will see this um, increase, any increase in traffic flow um, will be bottlenecked at the um, all along the road into Gillingham. That's my first question, maybe to um, the uh, the traffic management, Steve Savage, possibly. Um, my second point is regarding the amount of affordable housing. I noticed from the um, the, the middle of that that recommendation, a seeking to secure a policy compliant 25% of affordable housing across the development as a whole. Now, I would see that 10% for this first um, tranche of development, I think causes two issues in my mind. Firstly, what guarantees have we got from the development consortium as a whole that the 25% will be made up in future development um, building? And the second is if that my view is that affordable housing should be spread evenly amongst all development. And so I would very much like to see if we can tweak that at this first recommendation to ensure that 25% of a 
any tranche of development is put over to affordable housing because I think that if we leave the yeah we leave the numbers to be made up in future development that will um, by definition concentrate affordable housing in either the second or third parts of this build I would suggest that evenly mixing 25% of affordable housing across the whole development um, is far less of a risk of creating small pockets of affordable housing that is uh, noticeable and that concentrates it um, un, uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, that the that the concentrations are evenly spread. Thank you. I think thank, thank you very much. I think we, we have the gist of that question. Can I ask um, on the first question then about the impact of traffic? Um, is Robert or Steve, which of you would like to address that? For Steve, 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 you want to take that one? And just yes, um, if you allude to the manse for us as well. Certainly, Chair, as the Highway Authority, it's appropriate. Uh, if I can assure Councillor Cook that uh, transport assessment was submitted in support of the whole of the Gillingham SSA site and formed part of the environmental statement. Uh, I could give you some technical uh, information. An S-Paramix micro simulation model of Gillingham was developed and basically that's a, a 3D model which uh, assesses transport impacts and identifies mitigation measures of development proposals and it used data from all the recent traffic surveys that were available. Um, it produced a baseline traffic and network condition model, which we could then look at various scenarios at and agree with the applicant. We are well aware of the amount of traffic that will be generated, but I think the important point here is that the assessment includes a number of off-site highway improvements uh, proposed to the B3081 and B3092 corridor, as well as the new uh, principal street, street, the link through, and improvements to pedestrian and cycle uh, links. Uh, I'll come back to the junctions, but basically in terms of the transport assessment, the um, the, the overall finding uh, that if all the works are implemented, all the highway improvement works in the vicinity are implemented, allowing for committed development and this development, that the in 2031, which is the predicted future, year, that the journey times then will be effectively what they are now, allowing for the element of development. What I would say is that obviously with the current works which are being carried out in Gillingham, uh, we've got the cycleway improvement uh, works which are being carried out. We've got works which are going to take place uh, at Waitrose itself uh, to provide a signal control junction there. Uh, we're also going to, as Robert mentioned, the signalisation or improvement of the junction at uh, the Mance um, to ensure that we have a left turn in and out of the main road there to Station Road. We've got the site access itself. I, I can confidently say that we've fully assessed this, um, this site to ensure that everything that needed to be looked at is looked at in terms of traffic generation and as a high road authority we are confident that the mitigation measures proposed don't mean that we could ever determine this to be severe when we're looking uh, at the MPPF and as a consequence we've supported it chair thank you that's really very helpful thank you very much indeed um, Robert could you address Councillor Cook's second question about affordable homes and the spread of the allocation across this the period of time for this development uh, yes chair thank you very much uh, Chair, it's clearly stated in the policy where the aim is to get 25%. Uh, viability, as I stated earlier, can be an issue with any large scale development. And it is the council's obligation to, as a competent authority, to sit down and discuss viability issues with developers. Uh, that has been a, a sticking point in our negotiations over the past year or two. Your officers are pushing hard to get 25%, but the uh, developers have um, costed their scheme and are and have their position to say that it can only afford 10% um, affordable housing at this time. That is the purpose of having the review mechanism so that uh, whilst ideally we'd like to have 25% in every phase of development, uh, that 
in reality isn't going to be possible. So what we're aiming to achieve with the review mechanism is to get 25% overall across the whole development. And uh, when we come to design, of course, the uh, policies for this council are that uh, social housing should be uh, should be blind. It should be uh, the same as um, other housing in the area. So the quality of build wouldn't suffer. Uh, that's that's the, the best that we can do, and that's how we operate on every large site. That that's very helpful. Yes, and and um, uh, committee members will be. Uh, you know, we are familiar with this position. Our policy, as I understand it, is for twenty five percent affordable housing in Shaftesbury um, across the entire site. I don't think we have policy that would support um, taking a different line from that. So I I um, I think that's a, a very helpful and clear response. Thank you. Um, I now have Councillor Andrews who would like to ask a question. Councillor Andrews. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Tim uh, has already, um, Councillor Cook has already uh, asked one of the questions I was going to ask. Um, well, I have two couple of questions. Um, firstly, the, the flooding issue, uh, the Environmental Agency. Are we sure after the recent uh, episodes over last winter that the stream on the north uh, northwestern edge of the of the uh, development uh, will not cause adverse flooding. Uh, so that's the first one. Can we have assurances that they've taken that into account um, during the winter weather? The second one was um, uh, uh, to Steve Savage on the uh, on the infrastructure and the sustainable transport such as cycleways. Have we built in any cycleways into this development as 43% of the population currently own or have access to a cycle and we're all being encouraged to cycle at the moment? Um, and as a response, just a response to Councillor Cook, um, what he said earlier about the junction, I do assure him that um, we had a new junction put in in Sherborne, a three-way junction, and it's been a, a revelation. It has actually improved traffic flow rather than stop traffic flow. So um, I will assure him that um, the modelling that um, the, the, the highways department do is absolutely fantastic. So uh, that, that were my couple of questions. That's good to hear. Thank you. Um, Robert, can you address the flooding issue, please? Uh, certainly, Chair. Uh, Councillors, you'll see on the screen before you the illustrative master plan. Whilst this is only illustrative, you'll see if you follow the arrow there, uh, there's the river. The, that's I believe that's the Stour. Um, the, oh no, it's not the Stour, big part. Um, the the green area is flood zone two. So the developers are already well aware of where the flood zones are at and they will, their intention is to just build within flood zone one. Uh, your, the lead local flood authority would raise or would have raised objections if they felt um, there was gonna be a risk of flooding as well as the environment agency. You have no objections from them. They're satisfied with the details that they have so far. And as you can see from this illustrative master plan, uh, the developers are well aware of where flood zone one and two are at. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. And Steve, the question of in, uh, uh, infrastructure and cycleways within so, the plan. Certainly. Well, the first thing to note is that uh, you'll have seen there's a travel plan condition recommended. They're looking for a settlement wide travel plan to be, to be implemented. One of the crucial parts of their um, transport assessment was to encourage modal shift away from the car by uh, alternative means, i.e. travel planning. Um, they've also, uh, one of the um, requirements for them to provide a cycleway footway link through an existing footway onto Pheasant Way. Um, but I would say that we've looking at an internal layout of a site here, which is only illustrative and that the principal street application that's in with the authority at the moment does show cycleways on either side of the, of the principal street to encourage cycling. The internal layout will be 20 miles per hour or less, which again will encourage on street cycling and the works which are currently being carried out in Gillingham along the Newburg Way are to provide uh, an extension to the existing cycleway. So I think we're well covered on that particular element. Thank you, Chair. That's helpful. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Councillor Fry. 
you have some questions. You have Thank four you, questions. Thank you, Do you Chair. want to ask your questions one at a time, Councillor Fry, and have an answer or all together? Well, two have been dealt with, and I'd like just to comment. Councillor Andrews picked up on one of mine, which is the flooding concern, and that has been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cook picked up on the affordable housing on the low numbers, and I share his concerns on the very low numbers there. 10% um, is appallingly low number, particularly when you're spreading it across the whole development, and I appreciate we want 25% but that puts pressure on the other areas to have a, increase a larger numbers. Um, so I share that because getting will have a lot of young people who can't afford the houses in the, in the rest of that estate. So I don't know what else can be done, but I'll put that back. Uh, I'll just share my concerns on that. My other two points are around energy efficiency factors such as renewables. I appreciate legislation hasn't yet caught up with the current mood um, of, of people and the current cl climate emergency. And I wonder, although I appreciate this is an outline thing, whether something could be included there to ensure that appropriate consideration is given to renewables and energy efficiencies. And my other question, do you want an answer first or do you want the other question? Go on with the next question and, and then uh, we can answer them both together. In relation to the 106, I'm looking considering slide 12 of social infrastructure I see no contributions there towards youth services um, being put in, whether that's a contribution to from individual houses or a contribution towards Gillingham youth services that may that will go because we will have young people on this development. They will need somewhere to go and they will need some support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, on the affordable housing, I think it's you. It's it's still on the table. We can come back to that. The energy efficiency, Robert. It, this is an outline application, of course. Uh, yes, uh, one of the developers uh, and I have bantered about this, and it's it's something that we are all well aware of, and we're trying to achieve the best we can. Unfortunately, um, our hands as a planning authority are a bit tied with uh, what are the building regulations. We cannot um, insist at the moment, as far as uh, we're aware, on putting on any solar panels or other renewable sources. You will have seen, hopefully you would have seen, in the uh, draft master plan um, that they their aim is to build efficient homes. Um, and to some, to some degree, that's something we're going to have to keep picking up on um, with each phase of development. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, and the section 106, uh, there was no inclusion for oh, yes. youth services. Um, youth services is a, a broad terminology. What I would point out is the amount of um, benefit the community is getting with. If you see the arrow here, this stage has um, a public open space. The next development, these do these two developments do complement one another. So the next development, you'll see that there is also a large area of public open space uh, that is for play fields and what have you. So in terms of um, youth services, I uh, the, the local Gillingham Town Council as well as ourselves feel that that's being adequately, adequately addressed. Thank, thank you very much. Do you want to uh, say anything further about the affordable housing? It's been raised again, or does your you've answered that to your satisfaction? I, yeah, I think we've answered that to the best of our ability at this time. As we've said, viability is uh, always an issue with large developments, and the officers are always pushing to get the best possible deal for the council, and that's that's our position, and we will continue to um, maintain that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Pipe, you have some questions. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's on the section 106 agreement. It's, 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 it's a section 106 agreement likely to be signed by the 20th of November uh, this year. We have an echo on the line. Um, Seems to be gone. gone. Has it gone? It has gone. It's yeah. gone. Thank you. Should I, start, should I start again? Yes, please. Okay, thank you, Chairman. 
Is the um, section uh, 106 agreement likely to be completed by the 20th of November, Robert? Uh, Chair, yes, that's correct. In my opinion, and it's only an opinion and it's kind of like judging the weather for next week. Um, we have done a lot of negotiations with uh, uh, both the applicants uh, that you'll see today, and we are optimistic that it will be signed by uh, the 14th of November. Uh, far more optimistic than I was, say, a year ago. OK, thank you for that. Um, can I just add, Chairman, um, that the principle of development on this is, site is, is, is a good, good principle and the access points I see no problem with whatsoever. Uh, and I, 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 I really, I really like the idea of this thing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor David Taylor. Come on, mute. No, you're not mute. I can hear you. You're mute at the moment, Councillor Taylor. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm managing now. Uh, two concerns, really. One was uh, briefly expressed by two fellow councillors about the Section 106 and the affordable housing. Um, that is a major concern, as, as Councillor Fry said, about the youngsters trying to get into property and stuff like that. So my concern would be if actually how can we make absolutely sure this be, be delivered? Because it seems so we had one development in Dorset which got away with it and uh, things that uh, it keeps, it keeps carrying on. But the other question is the one about the new road being built in there for, for the access for for um, for construction traffic, etc. Uh, when it's completed the development, if it goes ahead, uh, would there be speed restrictions as well? Because I was thinking about the fact that there's 961 developments, which means they're going to be over a thousand cars going through there somewhere. So it's just like a look at the speed up options of controlling it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Speed restrictions on the new roads. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Well, the, the new road, the principal street itself, as submitted, is for a 30 mile per hour highway. It's designed accordingly with the requisite forward visibility and the like, which is obviously the 30 mile per hour echoes the uh, adjacent B-class roads. The illustrative master plan you can see in front of you shows uh, the residential development served from the primary streets, the principal street. Our target will be ideally to get the majority of those roads at 20 miles per hour or less by design. Um, the central portion uh, is relatively windy, to use a non-technical term, which obviously discourages high speed. So the, the simple answer is the principal street will be 30 miles per hour. We'll be targeting everything else as 20. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Councillor Fry, you want to come back in? Yes, please. I was just looking at the, the money and the, the contributions towards youth services. That was what I was hoping to pick up yeah. quickly again. Yes, um, is there any way of going back to the developers and asking them to make a contribution over the course of the development towards overall youth services in the Gillingham area? I mean, you've got a contribution towards various things in there, highways, uh, medical and so on, um, but I see nothing in there. They will be building, I'm sure, small play areas for the tiddlies, but nothing for the teenagers. Thank you. Thank you. Robert. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, that's going to be a difficult one. Um, as you see from the slide that I have up there now for under green infrastructure. Is, can you all see that? Yes. So they are um, going to be providing sports pitches, um, uh, local equipped areas of play and um, I believe there's a contribution also going to uh, the health facility at the or the um, the recreation. I can't think of the name of the place in the center of town. Yes. Um, so they they have um, allocated uh, quite a bit towards youth services um, in the form of sports pitches and, and play areas. Uh, if that's not sufficient, um, then of course we could try to take that up in future negotiations and, and report back to you on that one. Can I comment in please, Chair? Yes. Um, yes, although I see there's green spaces for those who want to play sports outside, not everybody does, so I would appreciate if you could go back as part of the ongoing discussions to get some actual money for Gillingham and for these in whatever means that could be. And I'm sure the ward members have got a better 
view of what services are actually in there. And I'm thinking of, of a youth club, money to run that or something on that sort of line. Thank you. There is also a contribution to the, the library, of course, which is also um, very relevant to young people who perhaps don't want to be playing sport. Um, I wonder if the local members, Val or Belinda, you have any comment on this? Chairman? Yes, please. Uh, it's yeah. Belinda here, Gillingham Ward. Well, I think these have been worked up along very substantially with the town council. Um, obviously, I'm not on the town council anymore, but I'm sure that it's, everything has been covered that should be covered. I'm quite happy with that. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, this is Val Bunkery and I'm uh, quite happy as well. So, so the local members are happy with the section 106 um, contributions as outlined here. Yes. I, I think the committee might, might want to take a steer then from the local members rather than um, trying to second guess what the town of Gillingham has, has spent some time working on. It's up to you, but that would be um, perhaps my advice. Um, could, could you be satisfied with that, that you've heard from the local members that they are satisfied? Sorry, yes, yes, I am. OK, thank you. I, I think nonetheless that your point is well made in general terms, and I think this committee uh, is sending back a message to officers, you know, don't forget our young people. I don't think they ever do, but I think that that's, you know, as a general point, it's, it's always well worth making. Um, yeah, yes, I, Chair. I, I accept we the points have all been made, but I still think there's, there's a missing that, and I appreciate that the town council is supportive, the members are supportive, but it just looks to me as a gap in the services being provided for the people of Gillingham. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'm satisfied with the response I've heard. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Chair, Thank you. Chair officers are always well, willing to engage with members uh, if they want to specifically identify um, uh, groups that, that need um, or could benefit from assistance that is directly related to the development. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to achieve that. So I look forward to working with Councillor Fry in the future on that matter. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Right. I have nobody else here indicating that they want to speak. I think that's right. Um, we have had a, a proposer and a seconder. Councillor Pothacry has proposed. Councillor Rydout has seconded. Could we have the um, recommendations up on the screen so that we know what we are now asking members to vote on? I, if, if you're ready, members, to go to the vote, I'm ready to go to the vote. Nobody has any, but anything else they'd like to say? Speak now. Right, then we will... Um, yeah, these sorry. Are, yes, please. Sorry, can I... Um, I note from the chat... Um, uh, Hannah's just replied to the f say that we can't insist on a certain level of affordable housing. Can I just have clarification on that point? Is that not what part of the reason that why why we're here as a committee? Hannah, could you could Chair, you, do you want me to yes, address that? I would like. Uh, thank you, Robert. Yes, I thought I've made it. It's a matter of policy, but Robert, please. Yeah, uh, Chair. So the question then is viability. Is viability a uh, reasonable uh, aspect to have a lower amount of affordable housing? Uh, the answer is quite simply uh, yes. If, if we're going to allow um, development, we need to consider whether, and, and this comes through in national guidance as well, is there incentive for the developers to build? They're not, uh, the, the general thinking is builders are not going to build if they can't make a profit. And um, if it's not viable, if the scheme, if they're providing 25%, but then making zero profit, then they're not going to want to build. So at this first step, as I said, there have been some difficult negotiations and, you know, Seeing 10% instead of 25% is uh, difficult to see. I appreciate that, but that's why we're trying to build in this viability mechanism to um, keep reviewing 
the affordable housing amount. And that's the way development progresses in the country. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Well, yeah, my point I think is, yeah, through through what I said in my comment there is that if 10% right now is is the limit of viability for any developer. Why why is this 25% figure even mooted? Because I can't see in the current economic climate and the, and the extreme uh, way that we are going to have to work, live for the next few years due to the current situation. If 10% is viable now, what um, guarantees or what um, confidence would we have that that extra up to 25% overall will be clawed back in the next two development rounds. Well, 25% yeah. is in there because 25% is policy in the North Dorset local plan, which this which is still drives the policy until we have a new local plan. 25% is the requirement for um, this part of Gillingham. So that's where the 25% comes from. And that remains our policy um, until we change until we have a new local plan that changes that. So that's why it's but as I think Robert has explained, beneath that or behind that requirement for 25% hangs the negotiations for viability. So we hold out for 25% as far as we can but we don't always get 25 percent is that is that a fair layperson's interpretation robert yes chair that's fair uh, um, councillors need to bear in mind that there are costs to building um and that's what makes up the viability so they're pre presenting all their costs and to, to complete the build and if their costs to complete the build don't allow for a sufficient um incentive profit then they won't undertake the build. So even, at the though, moment, even though we reserve the right as as per our policy to insist on 25 percent, we're now saying the message that I get is that we're saying we've, that 25 percent is our policy, but we're going to let you only provide 10. I, 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 I see that as an anomaly. Maybe we need to have a discussion outside this meeting regarding that, and I don't want to take up any more time at the meeting. However, no, uh, well, my, my, I would like to propose an amendment that we do it, insist on a 25% by, um, proportion of affordable housing for this development. OK, we've had a proposal for an amendment. Could I have some advice, please, from um, Hannah and uh, from Robert about whether or not it is within the gift of this committee to put an amendment that insists um, we have policy for 25%, which we, which is our how much further that can that than that can we take it? Could we have some advice, please? Chair, um, we could take that and go away to um, continue with the negotiations of the Section 106 agreement. And if we were not able to agree 25% uh, affordable housing, we would be back uh to the to the committee with you all um presenting uh something similar to what you see today okay i'm i'm looking for a response from councillor cook or councillor fry that are pushing for this and i think you're basically being told we will just go around in a circle is what I'm hearing here. Yeah. Councillor Fry here. I've, I've listened to all the comments and I accept the difficult discussions. We would like to see more affordable housing, but it's a business deal and they're always going to plead poverty or lack of viability in, uh, on the on the scheme. And I think my my real concern is and I accept 25% across the whole board is required and is policy. Once you get 10% in there, we've set the marker for future developments that developers are going to come in and, and play hardball to get 10% or less. I see our young people and the affordable housing scheme suffering from this across the county. We all know what it's like. You want to go and buy a new car, you want to buy the, pay the less you can. 
the developers, it's pure speculation and greed, want to make as maximum profit as they can, and they will plead poverty. Um, but I've heard the comments, and I, I think the council is in a difficult position. So I've said my bit. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. How, how would the committee wish to progress with this? Because I, I fear that we are dancing on the head of a pin here. I, what, what we are debating, it seems to me, is the fact that we're not very comfortable with the way the market works. And we, I think we would all agree about that. But the fact is that we're the planning committee and we have to um, uh, make a decision here. And I'm not really hearing anything that I can take forward as a revised recommendation. Hannah, would you like to come in and comment here? Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I completely sympathise with um, with councillors' concerns uh, regarding the affordable housing contribution um, in terms of the um, amount provided. Um, and, and we always try to seek to um, secure policy compliant affordable housing. So in this case, 25%. But what we have to do um, as well is consider development viability, as Robert's already pointed out. So we're unfortunately not in a situation where we can say the um, in Gillingham you have to provide 25% and that's the end of it. And this is what all the work that Simon and Robert have um, been talking about that they've been um, ne negotiating with the the developers to get to a point where we have an agreed level of affordable housing. In this instance, unfortunately, at the moment, it's not on the first phase um, policy compliance. It would be 10%, and that is why there is a um, a mechanism to revisit the viability um, across the um, development. So at each phase or um, at specific points when it's required to um, be carried out. And that would be determined through the Section 106 agreement. So there is an opportunity to look at um, development as we progress. And that's the idea of the phase and approach to it. But to simply say um, this phase, first phase must have 25% would, would be a challengeable position to take. It's not in line with the with the policy and the MPPF and it's not a, um, an advisable route for members to want to take now after all of this negotiation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I've, I've got a number of speakers wanting to um, uh, come in yeah. and I've also had um, a call that we should move to the vote. Could I ask Carol Jones, uh, Councillor Jones, if you would like to speak, please? Thank you, Chair. I just want to call a line under this. We all, I know we want affordable housing, but we must trust in our officers that they are doing the very best. When a scheme becomes not viable due to cost, we have sites that nothing happens and we've got them in Sturminster Newton with the Butts Pond site, 90 houses never built. We've got other sites that they're just not being built because they become unviable. And we must trust our officers and I'd just really like to get to the vote. We've, we've talked about this for a long time. Let's get this done and through. Thank you, Chair. That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Belinda Rideout from Gillingham, you wanted to speak. Thank you, Chairman. I think Councillor Jones has just said what I was going to say, basically. I understand the affordable concerns, but much work has taken place for years on this, and we risk losing this development for Gillingham if we aren't flexible. Let's listen to the officers. We're heading towards economic downturn. Thank you for that. Thank you. I think I'm I'm taking the mood of the meeting is that we we, we would now like to move to a vote with the recommendations as given. Uh, um, I hope I've got that right. I'm seeing some nodding in my little boxes here. So we have, I will now move to a vote if I may, just before I do so. Um, uh, Councillor Pipe, I understand that you dropped out, your, your connection dropped for two or three minutes during the course of this debate. I think, um, my understanding of the position is that that's the equivalent of leaving the room if we were in a live meeting. And therefore, I'm afraid I think that means that you can't vote on this, but your, your contribute, you, you have been able to part, participate in some part of the discussion, but I think you can't vote. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, my, my, my question, Chairman, is from Laura. Can the council suggest what he may have missed and any recap? No, I, right. I no, I. This is this is eleven twenty eight. This is now. On your yes. feet. We we can't recap a debate. Um, if a if a member wasn't present for the okay, debate. Okay, fine. 
fine. I, that I'm so, you know because we we recapping the debate is not is not the same thing as participating in the debate. I'm I'm very sorry. This is actually the first time this has happened in a meeting. So um, yes. Yeah, so so you're breaking new ground here, Councillor Pipe. Thank you for that. Um, right. Could I then ask members, could we go to the vote? We have the recommendations before us. If you agree with these recommendations, could you say for? If you don't, could you say against? And if you wish to abstain, say abstain. As I call your name, click your microphone on and, and tell me how you vote. Councillor Andrews. For. Thank you. Councillor Cook. Four. Thank you. Councillor Fry. Four. Councillor Hall. Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor Penfold. Four. Thank you. Councillor Pipe is not able to vote. Councillor Apothecary. Four. Councillor Rideout. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. Thank you very much, councillors. That was a very good debate and very clear voting there. You did that very well. Um, we'll take a deep breath then and move on to our next agenda item, uh, which is um, uh, agenda item 5B. This is Land at Park Farm, Kingsmead Business Park, Gillingham. And again, we have Robert is going to be, Robert Lennis, uh, planning officer, is going to be presenting this one. Robert, over to you, if you please. Thank you, Chair. Members will have read the reports and noticed that uh, there were uh, less uh, issues for uh, this application than the other one at the last committee. Uh, the resolution of the previous committee, of course, was to grant conditional permission subject to the signing of the legal agreement, which we've been talking about ad nauseum. And um, moving along, just to show you the, this is the uh, Park Farm site controlled by uh, C.G. Fry and Sons. And you've seen this slide from the previous identifying the site in the southern extension that here's the aerial photograph uh, the issues we talked about with a late representation or request for additional time from the environmental health officers applies to this application as well uh, as you see it's a greenfield site we're not expecting any uh, any land contamination other than uh, a request for a condition to uh, stop if un unidentified contamination is found. The other elements with regard to the environmental health officers apply as the other site. They have a, a nice margin between existing developments, so we don't foresee too many amenity issues arising. Uh, this is the access point off of Shaftesbury Road, which I will allow Steve to elaborate on, Steve Savage. And these are the pedestrian access points into uh, the uh, adjacent neighborhood. And similarly, the Section 106 is in draft. It's, it's progressed nicely. We're at the same point uh, just about with this um, developer, so we are optimistic that it should be signed by uh, November. And the list of uh, things that we will be trying to secure or will be securing in the 106 are listed here in front of you. And the conclusions. Uh, there have been no changes in policy or any other uh, material considerations that would warrant a different recommendation. Uh, the principle of development for this site is up to uh, 634 homes. As, as the other application, this is a outline application to agree the principle of development and the details of access. Uh, we will be recommending uh, for approval conditional planning permission similar to the other. Uh, I'll bring this slide back up after Steve um, speaks on, on matters of highway. Steve, are you ready for that? 
Thank you, Robert. So the Highways Authority here. Um, as you can see, slide seven there shows the uh, the link through from the existing 7.3 metre wide carriageway, which is served off the Sydenham's roundabout, which also serves Orchard Park. Um, provided at six metres, two metres of footways either side, and then obviously the six metres can narrow down to a more standard estate road where necessary. So that's the only vehicular access into the site. Uh, pedestrian cycleway access is provided from Stern Avenue, which is shown on slide eight, if you may, Rob. Is he listening? There, we, uh, that's the one. So you can see a three metre wide cycleway footway there with uh, bollards to prevent car access. And then the next slide shows a similar three metre wide cycleway footway onto Trent Square, which is at the northern end of the existing development. So they're the three access points. The other highway matters that we discussed on the last application are obviously pertinent to this one as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Um, we have no uh, representations from the public on this planning application, though you will remember that the remarks that the ward member made uh, for our previous application he said apply to this one as well um, so we will move straight through then to the committee and again um, as last time I would like to ask the other two ward members if either of them would like to speak first I have Councillor Belinda Rideout who's indicating she would like to speak. Uh, Chair can I be so rude as to interrupt there? Yes um, just one other thing I wanted to pick up on, uh, and that was the planning balance that members will have to go through considering um, the weights to be given to social, uh, economic, and yes. environmental aspects of the development. Um, you should be aware of the, the uh, heritage uh, assessment that was undertaken by our conservation officers as well as uh, Historic England. Uh, they uh, are supportive of the application. They have no objection in principle, though they have noted that it's uh, there is less than substantial harm and you need to undertake a planning balance exercise. Um, I beg, let me digress. Less than substantial harm to the heritage assets in the area. One would be Park Farm, which if you look at my arrow is uh, swirling around right here, um, not Park Farm, but the the old uh, farmhouse, which is a Grade Two listed building, and of course up to the north of the site is the scheduled ancient monument of uh, King's Court Castle. Uh, as I said, Historic England has no objection in principle, though they have noted that the development will have less than substantial harm, and in the planning balance exercise, we as officers consider that the economic benefits and the social benefits that would be delivered by this development would outweigh the uh, the that less than substantial harm. Uh, that that was for completeness. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much indeed. Most helpful. Thank you. Um, uh, so, Councillor Rideout, you would like to speak first, and then I have Councillor Bill. Right Thank you, Chairman uh, Belinda Ryder here, Gillingham Ward. I have a comment first and I have a question of highways, if I may, please. You may. Yep. Well, my comment regarding this application dittos everything I said for the previous application. Um, and I've read through the amended, um, uh, the clarification for the heritage assets and the amendments to the recommendations and the conditions. And again, these give clarity and flexibility, as I've stated previously. So uh, there's much local support for this development as well, and it's going to bring forward lots of benefits, environmental, economic, um, community benefits to Gillingham, along with the housing and infrastructure. And I've no hesitation in putting this forward uh, for approval. Right. My question for Steve, please, a highway. So actually, it's not a question, it's an ask, and I've asked this before. Um, <laughs> it's regarding the access points on slides eight and nine. Um, this is off CERN Avenue and Trent Square. Um, when I was leading the Traffic Management Working Party at the Town Council, we had many problems with um, 
vehicles parking in front of those bollards blocking the access. So my ask is, please, can we have appropriate markings on the floor to prevent that happening both sides on going into the access on the other side of the development side of the access, please? Thank you. Thank you. Steve, do you, do you want to respond to that point? Uh, I can certainly, Chairman. That, that, um, yeah. Obviously, if the application is approved and the reserve matters applications are submitted, we will look comprehensively at the, the linkages. I do take on board Councillor Rideout's uh, point here, and I'm sure that as part of any necessary traffic management measures, we can ensure that there's keep clear markings or the like. But there, that's not to say that people won't still want to park there, of course, but we will do our use our best endeavours. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any way we can make a, a note of that? In in our minutes or an advisory or something similar says it it doesn't get lost and has slightly and and has a little bit of um, formality to it. Is that possible? Yes, Chairman. I've noted that in the minutes. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, can I come next to the second, um, uh, the third of our uh, Gillingham uh, ward members, Councillor Pothery, before I go on to other. Um, uh, committee members, if you would, if you wouldn't mind my altering the order slightly, Councillor Pothery, would you like to speak next? Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application for development, like the previous one, has been a long time coming. The community of Gillingham is totally supportive of the plans for the new extension and amenities for our town, and I welcome this coming before us today. As before, I'd like to second the approval of this application with the conditions A and B as recommended. Thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Bill Pipe, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I see on the section 106, uh, there's a provision for a, a two form entry school. Um, what, what type of school will this be? Will it, will, because d down in this end of the world, we still have infants, juniors and secondary schools. Um, what, can you tell me what type of school it will be? Robert, could we, what type of school will it be? Uh, yes, that's um, um, the, the, <laughs> the first one. <laughs> what, do you, what? In, do you, in, yes. Sec, uh, uh, primary school. That's correct. Primary school. That's the one I was looking for. Sorry. Primary school. Was that, so that will encompass infants. You put my and mind two form entry. Down this end of the world. OK. Yeah. Um, do you think that's sufficient, a two form entry school? Do you know how many children, uh, Robert, would, would would pass through that school in, 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 in one school year? Uh, I don't have the numbers to hand. Um, however, my recollection from uh, discussion is uh, with this southern allocation in total there will probably be an over provision of classroom um, availability because the the other development will be having an extension to the, the virgin saint mary school there that was to the north of their site as well and this as you can see with the arrow i'm pointing to the school uh -huh. location uh, would be a two form entry so actually they're getting three new uh, form in, I said, in, so, so, so it, as I said we expect it to be uh, generous and probably a slight over provision is my uh, recollection it, it, it was a bit of a trick question actually because uh, a two form entry school will, will allow 30 uh, sorry 60 to 66 children to pass through each year um, but you did mention actually you've got an extension to the Virgin St Mary's school which would allow then 90 to 99 children to pass through in any academic any one academic year yes that's so, correct but would this robert be a standalone new school or would it be a satellite of the virgin mary uh facility that already exists my understanding from discussions with the education uh, authority officers is that it would be a standalone this is a two-form standalone OK, with a new name, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we actually we haven't even addressed that issue yet. Uh, okay. Nobody said one way or another. OK, um, that, that's the best speed. I'm quite happy with that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Most helpful questions. Um, uh, I, Councillor Fry is next. Thank you very much, Chair. I would just like to uh, make a word of caution. I appreciate this development. It's been in the pipeline for a long time. 
it's clearly supported by the community and the local councillors. But if we're not careful that the authorities and the council on the back foot a little bit in negotiations and gives the developers the upper hand slightly because they know it's a needed development. All I would, would like to raise is my previous comments and I have them noted, please. I don't expect discussion around energy efficiency factors on all the properties to be considered at a very early stage. Uh, contributions towards new services, please, at some stage to be considered. And again, I express my concern about the only 10% of affordable housing. I don't expect debate. It's just to have my comments and concerns noted, please. Thank you, Chair. That, that's very helpful. That's all duly noted. On Just on the question of energy efficient houses, of course, um, that comes up almost every time at this committee and um, the uh, portfolio holder for planning who is uh, putting together, who's in charge of putting together the new local plan is always here and is always hearing that. And I very much expect that the um, concern that we express and the enthusiasm that we express for energy efficiency, uh, energy efficient homes will be reflected in the new local plan because we keep we keep mentioning it. So we it's getting across very clearly how important that is. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I have Councillor David Taylor next. Councillor Taylor, could you unmute your mic? Yeah, I've done. Yeah, I've done. Thank you. Um, just as like my previous uh, question on the previous applications, best uh, traffic calming measures, and also the fact you said they've only got one access. Is that is there nothing else can be done for another access? Would you like me to answer, Chair, as a home yes, authority? Please. Yeah, yeah. Please do. Um, they have obviously the two pedestrian accesses. At one time, they were seeking to provide another vehicular access at the northern end of the existing site, immediately to the southwest. But obviously, the local residents weren't keen on that. There, there's no hard and fast guidance that says you can't have a single access point into a development of this size. Uh, it's primarily due to emergency access uh, that we do look at other alternative access points to be provided. Six metre wide carriageway into the site is more than adequate to get a fire tender through if the vehicles were parked both sides. So the bottom line here, councillor, is that we have no reason to say no to a single access point. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. I'm happy with that. Thank you very much. I have Councillor John Andrews who would like to ask a question. Yeah, my question is based upon what Les was saying about you know, renewables, etc. Uh, as this development is going to take a long time to develop, um, will it be pertinent that um, in the future when building regulations and, and that NPPF change that any houses that aren't constructed by then uh, are then required to have um, those measures put into them. I don't know if anybody can answer that question because it's purely uh, speculative, but uh, I just thought I'd ask it. Chair? That's most interesting. Chair? Robert, could we have some clarification on that? Yes. Uh, the good news is that we would be able to take that on board. As each phase of development comes forward, they're going to be asking for detailed permission on scale appearance um layout and uh, and landscaping so this isn't the end of the story we're going to be revisiting this site numerous times in the coming years uh, about the details of each phase and so if if policy and legislation change we will be at liberty to enforce that and seek for um, uh, better or, or more renewables thank you that that's very encouraging. Thank you very much indeed. Colleagues, I have nobody else indicating that they would um, like to speak on this. I have had a proposer, Councillor Rideout, and a seconder, Councillor Pothecary. Um, I'm therefore minded to move to a vote if you're all ready. If anybody, um, yes, I'm being urged to move to a vote. Um, could the recommendations are up. Thank you very much. I will uh, call your name then e each in turn and if you could indicate whether you if you support these recommendations you are for, if you don't against or you may abstain. Um, Councillor John Andrews. For. Thank you. Councillor Tim Cook. For. Councillor Les Fry. 
Four. Councillor Matt Hall. Four. Councillor Carol Jones. Four. Councillor Mary Penfold. Chairman, I think I, in the interest of transparency, I will not vote as I had to move because from one room to another because my battery was falling. OK, thank you. That's a no, a no vote from Councillor Penfold. Very helpful. Councillor Pipe, you can vote this time. Then I shall vote for, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Apothecary. Four. Councillor Rideout. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. There we are. You're getting very good at this voting, Lark members. Thank you very much indeed. We move on then to our next uh, agenda item, agenda item six, which is a traffic regulation order, again for Gillingham Road and transport improvements. And this is being presented for us today by Emma Baker. Emma, are you there? I am. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Yes. I'm just uh, sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen and I, I can, can see, see you. you. Yeah. Could we Brilliant. have Emma live on the, the uh, webcast, please? Is my presentation? Your presentation is up. Thank you very much. It is, right. Could you show it as a, uh, sorry. Is it as a slideshow now? Yes, fine, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chair and councillors. Um, just get my uh, screen ready for you. So thank you very much for letting me present today. I'm here to present to you the proposed traffic regulation order um, for one way street restriction on Station Road higher in Gillingham. So this is the location plan to show um, Station Road higher, um, just to the north of Lenuborg Way. Um, this is part of a wider um, Gillingham growth, growth project scheme that Dorset LEP, uh, Dorset Local Enterprise Partnership, has allocated up to three million, uh, three point four five million pounds. Um, the proposals for Higher Station Road are part of the Sustainable Transport Scheme for Pedestrian Improvements um, that are proposed between Gillingham Train Station and the High Street using Station Road. Uh, the improvements aim to improve um, aim to improve the public realm and encourage um, increased non-car trips along this corridor um, necessary to access the town from the train station. So the next slide shows you the proposals, the scheme plan. So providing new opportunities for sustainable travel by improving the pedestrian facilities encourages and enables more sustainable transport journeys within Gillingham. The proposals on Station Road Higher reduce the carriageway to one way to enable the improvements of the pedestrian environment by widening the footway on the eastern side. At the moment, the footways on both sides are substandard and difficult for um, mobility users and pushchairs um, and to get more than um, sort of more pedestrians to pass. So by widening the footway on one side, we're able to retain the parking, um, the current parking um, and um, have one way traffic traveling southbound. So the plans of the um, Gillingham Road and Transport Improvement proposals were displayed to the public at two public exhibitions um, in Gillingham Town Hall during July 2019. The consultation on this scheme closed in August 2019 and then the feedback from residents was reviewed by the scheme engineers to help decide how we were to proceed. The public exhibitions were well attended and we had a lot of questions and discussion. Overall, we had 90 consultation responses um, received to the public consultation and to the specific question referring to the proposal to make um, higher station road one way. We had 50% that strongly agreed or agreed, um, 14, just over 14% that neither agreed or disagreed, and just over 35% that either disagreed or strongly disagreed. Following the public consultation, the project team agreed that it was um, right to take this traffic regulation order forward for um, advertising. So the package of highway proposals in Gillingham was advertised for public consultation, which included 
the one proposed one way restriction on Station Road. Um, the consultation took place from the 10th of January 2020 and the objection period closed on the 31st of January 2020. During uh, f following the con consultation, two objections to the proposed one way um, uh, one way restriction on Station Road higher were received, um, both from the same household. The two non supporting respondents object to the proposal applying to bicycles and consider that pedal cycles should be permitted to use the route in both directions. Allowing bicycles to continue to use Station Road higher in both directions was considered as part of the scheme design. However, we are extremely constrained with the width of the road as it was already very narrow. In order to improve the pedestrian environment, the scheme proposes to widen the footway on the eastern side by reducing the carriageway to one way. A cycle contraflow lane would necessitate making one of the footways narrower than they currently are, and as they are both already substandard pushchairs and mobility scooters, they already struggle. The running carriageway width would be 3.5 metres, which is wide enough for buses or a fire engine, but it is not wide enough to make it feel open. The scheme designer was extremely concerned about the safety of cyclists if they were permitted to use Station Road as a contraflow. There is the potential conflict with large vehicles, parked cars, side accesses and narrow footways. The scheme does not propose to remove any of the parking along Station Road. The use of cycle contraflow in other areas of the county is being investigated by our transport planning team um, who would like to implement more of this across the county. However, in this particular instance, there's no certainty that it would be appropriate in advance of delivering the proposed footway and wide footway widening and carriageway narrowing on this um, on Station Road higher. We have looked at um, possible alternative routes for cyclists. We are um, the wider scheme, the wider Gillingham um, growth project um, is improving cycle provision along Le Nouveau Way. Um, and the, there is a proposal to sign cyclists from the train station, which is shown at the bottom of the map here, um, along the Newborg Way using a shared use footway cycleway up to the Waitrose Junction, where there be new Toucan crossings to be able to cross into the Chantry Fields car park and utilise a route around the back of Waitrose into the high street. There is also uh, some cyclists may also choose to continue cycling on road from the um, Lenewborg Way Station Road Junction to the east, um, cycling on, on road on Lenewborg Way to the Newbury Roundabout Junction and accessing the High Street um, from the Newbury um, Mini Roundabout. And the plan here shows these alternative routes. So I now have um, a couple of photos of the existing situation. So you can see looking from Buckingham Road North along Station Road and you can see how narrow the footways already are. What we will be looking to improve is this eastern um, footway by widening that out into the carriageway and the parking will then move further out into the carriageway. And this view is looking south along Station Road from the High Street. Again, as you can see, the narrow footways and the fairly narrow carriageway, even with two-way traffic flow as it is now. So it is recommended that having considered the representations received in response to the public advertisement and, the, and um, my report that the portfolio holder be recommended to implement the traffic regulation order as advertised, providing new opportunities for sustainable travel um, by improving the pedestrian facilities encourages and enables more sustainable tra transport journeys within Gillingham. The proposals on Station Road higher reduce the carriageway to one way to enable the improvement of the pedestrian environment by widening the eastern side footway. Um, so yes, and as my recommendation is there on the screen for you. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much indeed for a very clear, um, very clear report there. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Good.
Um, I have nobody yet indicating that they want to speak to this item. Yes, I I have now. Councillor John Andrews would like to ask a question. Councillor Andrews. Yeah, thank you uh, for that presentation, Emma. Uh, I totally understand the uh, the need to do this. Um, my question, and Les Fry might be able to help here. Um, um, mobility scooters, uh, can they go up one-way streets the wrong way? Uh, because they do all over the place, and um, I just wonder, as a matter of point of law, that they're they're allowed to. Um, it it gets disturbing sometimes. Um, so that that's my question, really. But uh, other than that, I've got no objection to the scheme. Um, I, I can respond as best as possible. Mobility scooters. Um, I'm not sure about the what the law is in them using roads, um, but they they are able to use the pavements. So if they were going to um, want to go north on the station road higher they are able to on the pavement as as any other pedestrians can do um, in terms of utilizing the carriageway i don't know the legal side of that i'm afraid okay and i just come back on that um and this is 112 meters of, of road as you indicated to me um during the week correct um, um if cyclists don't want to go the long way around they can get off and push their bikes that is another option for them, as well as the other facilities that we have pr are providing. Good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, uh, I have uh, Councillor um, Belinda Ride out to speak next, but before you do, Belinda, I should have re just reminded the committee that, of course, Councillor Apothecary, having um, uh, declared an interest, is not participating in this part of the meeting and her microphone is off. I just checked, so that's good. Uh, Councillor Rideout, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Belinda Rideout, Gillingham Ward. Um, well, as we've heard, Emma's made a very comprehensive presentation there. This is all part of the Gillingham Growth Project, is to help improve pedestrian and cycle links around our town, particularly with the, the growth of development to come. Um, it's part of a much needed wider scheme for infrastructure improvements, particularly for cycles and cyclists and pedestrians. Um, this particular scheme on Station Road does not remove any car parking, which was one of the concerns, and that's good. And I know a lot of work has gone into public engagement and all the main consultees support this. Um, I know there have been objections from two, read the cycle, not being able to cycle along this way, but there are two uh, very, um, there are two alternative routes using the Newbury roundabout and the Waitrose Chantry uh, way using the Toucan, Toucan crossing. So there, there, there are alternative and much safer ways to um, access the high street and I think safety has to come first here so I'm very happy to uh, propose that we approve this TRO. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, I have Councillor Taylor, David Taylor. Uh, come on, can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Yes. Um, I'm just uh, questioning because the fact that the unfairness to the cyclists, they have to go twice the length to get around, get around where they need to go to the high street. And that's a bit unfair. But the thing is that um, I, do we actually need the road? Do we need the road for the cars? Because the cars can go around. So it would make it easier for have cyclists to go both ways and pedestrians. I just thought, do we actually need the road? Um, I... I fully appreciate um, what you're saying in terms of the cyclists um, and um, we have, have obviously looked at, at the alternative measures there for cyclists. I'm just um, going back to the scheme, uh, a sort of larger scheme plan to show that the, the high street is quite heavily used. Um, and obviously a lot of traffic comes down from, I'm, I'm not sure of the name of, of this road, is it Queen's? Street, or I'm, I'm not quite sure of the name of this road up to the north. Um, Queen but any, Street. Yeah, it is Queen Street. Thank you, Belinda, um, Councillor Ryder. Um, there's a lot of vehicles that will come in rather than using the the Lenuborg Way. They will come in from Queen Street 
along the high street wanting to access for example asda here um, and if they were continue down to the mini roundabout and back on to the newborg way and the station road that then um, creates more traffic on these junctions um, whereas th this route is, is um, a, a much shorter route for those vehicles to undertake um, access to say asda and the industrial estate that is in this area as well Good, thank you. I would just remind members that we are here to um, make a decision about the planning application that is before us, not a hypothetical one where we don't have the road. So uh, either this is a good scheme or it's not a scheme. It, we're, we're not here to um, uh, discuss a, a, an alternative scheme that we might have preferred, just to, to be clear. So um, who, are, who would like to speak next? I've got Councillor... Um, Try. Yeah, Chair, I'm comfortable with what I hear. My colleague, Councillor Andrews, has raised a point in sort of a comment for me. I don't have experience in that area, but I would think that disability scooters and mobility scooters can access them, but they're considered, they're not considered motor vehicles as the road traffic law at this time. But I, I'm comfortable with what I'm seeing and hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've had, we've had a proposal, a proposal from, um, Councillor uh, Ryder and the seconder from uh, seconded by Councillor Andrews. Um, is anybody does anybody have anything further to say on this, or can we move to a vote? We have the recommendations on screen before you. I'm not hearing anybody else. I think then you seem to be ready to move to the vote, councillors, which is very helpful. Um, Thank you very much. So as I call your names, if you could say if you support this recommendation, say for, if you don't say against or you may abstain. Councillor Andrews. For. Thank you. Councillor Cook. For. Councillor Fry. For. Thank you. Councillor Hall. For. Councillor Jones. For. Thank you. Robin Legs. Councillor Penfold. Mary, pop on your microphone. Do we still have Councillor Penfold? Oh, yes, four, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Penfold. Uh, Councillor Pipe. Wholly supportive, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Pothecary is uh, not okay. with us. Uh, Councillor Rideout. Four. Councillor Taylor. Four. Good, that's lovely and clear. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, colleagues, you will be glad to know that we have no urgent items, so that brings to the end our, our business for today. Thank you very much. I think that was not too bad a meeting considering it's our first virtual meeting and I'm bringing the meeting to a close then at 12.07. Thank you very much. Go back to bed now, Les. <laughs>